Hello and welcome to the sixth video in the Project Waffles training series, this one on short-eared owl identification. Um, we're going to cover the identification of short-eared owls both by sight and sound and then talk about uh, the, mo the other similar species that are most likely to be confused with short-eared owls. As we mentioned in the last uh, video, uh, we want to make sure that uh, you only identify short-eared owls that you're positive on the confirmation. There's a separate box on the data sheet for birds that you think were short-eared owls but could not 100% confirm. Now we all wish and hope that we had videos or, or images like this one. Um, when we're out surveying where positive identification is very easy, much more likely we're going to see owls at a great distance and it will be more challenging to get that positive confirmation. Uh, before we dive into the owls, I just want to make sure that uh, you know there's also an identification guide on the web page out in, in the resources area with the data sheet uh, and the start times, etc. Um, please have a copy of this with you when you're out in the field. It emphasizes some of those key characteristics to look for for each of the species we'll talk about. So the short-eared owl is a medium-sized owl, much smaller than a great horned owl. Um, it is an eared owl, although as this, these photos illustrate, those ear tufts are very seldom seen. And you might be able to tell from the name that when they are seen, they're very small. Um, the key characteristics of these guys are this whitish, uh, gray, pale uh, face with yellow eyes set in uh, dark black patches. Um, all four of these photos have that characteristic. And uh, then if for the photos that show the breast, the breast can be varied in color, but generally is vertical streaking, a little darker in the upper breast, getting down to lighter in the belly area. Remember when you're looking for these guys, uh, these are all perched uh, photos here. They can be on the ground, they can be on fence posts, shrubs. Uh, we see them on power lines and uh, I've seen them sitting on power poles as well. Um, since we're timing these to catch the courtship flight, uh, we would also expect to look around and definitely above you. They can be hundreds of feet above you uh, flying along up there. And so make sure that you're searching the whole landscape and above you uh, for the birds. Here are some flight uh, photos. Um, now I encourage you, I, I couldn't get it to show the video in this presentation, so we've linked to some flight videos. Please take a look at that to get the style of flight. So short-eareds and long-eared owls have these very buoyant moth-like flight to them where they kind of bounce around through uh, as they travel. Similar to northern harriers, they often fly low to the ground while they're hunting, but remember the courtship is going to be high up in the air. Uh, they have the owl profile of that larger head tapered down. Uh, it's like a, a reverse triangle flying through the air. And a uh, characteristic we really want to look at is this really pale underwing with those dark comma-shaped carpal patches, we call them, out on the hand of the wing. Um, both the short ear and the long ear will have those patches. Uh, some other species, uh, such as rough-legged hawks, if they're still in the area, they will be while some of you are surveying, uh, they will have a larger round or square-shaped carpal patch that's dark like that. So we're looking at the narrow comma-shaped patch on a very white uh, and light-colored wing as an identification here for the short-eared owls in flight. And just to re-emphasize, please go out and take a look at those flight videos so you get a feel for what that buoyant, bouncy flight is that, that these owls perform. On the sound side of things, there are a number of sounds that these uh, that short-eared owls exhibit, and we can uh, identify them by the sound. Um, uh, if you are confident, once again, if you think it was a short-eared owl but can't be sure, put, make sure you mark that in the, um, in the appropriate box on the data sheet. So some of the traditional sounds are uh, hoots. They make a barking sound.
They have a screaming sound which can sound similar to a barn owl. And if you're very near one of their nests, they may give an alarm call. And during the courtship flight, um, they will uh, clap their wings together, and sometimes that is audible as well. Moving on to some of the species that you may confuse for a short-eared owl that we want to watch out for. Uh, one would be its closest relative, the long-eared owl. Most of you will not be surveying in a location where both owls are possible. Uh, long ears are much more dependent upon woodland type environments. But if you're in a shrubland area that borders up against the woodland or near riparian areas where there are a bunch of trees, this becomes a bigger possibility. Uh, as a closely related species, it's, it has some of the same characteristics like these narrow, dark comma patches, carpal patches at the end of its wing. But you'll notice that there's a lot more rufousy color involved, including the face. So the face on the short-eared owls was white and gray, and here we see it very uh, dark colored with rufous and browns. And then we see, uh, in addition to the vertical streaking on the breast, we see a lot of horizontal barring as well. So it's a much more richly marked bird compared to the short-eared owl. And to show you, uh, just for comparison here, back to the short-eared owl, vertical streaking that fades down towards the belly compared to the streaking and barring. You can also see the facial difference between white and gray face on the short-eared owl and the more brown uh, rufousy face on the long-eared owl. And I'll play a couple sounds for the long-eared owl as well. The long-eared owl um, hoot is very different from the short-eared owl. It's much more similar to a flammulated owl. Although their alarm call barking sound can be uh, much more similar to a short-eared short -eared owl. So moving on to our next similar species uh, would be the great horned owl. These are much larger. Uh, most everyone's probably familiar with them. They're one of the most abundant, or I guess they are, would probably be the most abundant owls in our area. Um, uh, they tend to always show those uh, robust ear tufts sticking up uh, as well. So for comparison, uh, here's a short-eared owl much smaller in size and that vertical streaking on the great horn owl you can see the very heavily barred uh, breast uh, as well as the rufous and brown on the face. Now the a similar species that flies in a very similar way to a short eared owl is the northern harrier. I often find harriers and short-eared owls flying together. In fact, we believe the short-eared owl is a proper subset of habitat uh, from the harrier. So if a short-eared owl is in an area, there's a good probability that harriers also use that area. As you can tell here in the male, which is a light color, it's very pale, similar to the short-eared owl. It has a white underwing, um, but the wing shape is different. It's much more sl slender and long. Uh, it's lacking that dark uh, comma-shaped carpal patch that we talked about uh, being present on the short ear and long-eared owl. They do fly low to the uh, ground, but instead of this buoyant, bouncy flight, it's very quick, tippy, and jerky flight. Um, so they're fairly easily to distinguish by flight style um, and also that lack of um, uh, carpal comma-shaped dark patch on its wing and wing shape. So as comparison here you can see though how uh, you need to take a double look and be careful between these two species and that they're presenting the same colors uh, at the same height above the ground. So uh, be careful of that. 
Females are much more uh, easily uh, distinguished. Uh, female harrier from a short-eared owl, uh, they're uh, cinnamon color and, and darker underneath. Uh, they have a lot of marking on their long, slender wings, but they're lacking that comma-shaped carpal patch that we're looking for on the short-eared owl. And then lastly, uh, on this uh, training presentation would be the barn owl, also possible out in the landscape, uh, not as likely to be there at the same time, uh, but we do see them out there. It does show the very pale underwing, and it has the body shape of an owl, of course. Um, and, and the color, but it lacks um, those darker wingtips and lacks those comma-shaped carpal patch that we talked about with the short-eared owl. And then if you do see one perched, its facial shape is much different. It doesn't have yellow eyes, um, and it, it has a much whiter appearance versus that uh, whitish gray color. So um, hope that helps. All right, that concludes this video. Hopefully these are useful for you. If you have any feedback, uh, let us know. Contact your state coordinator uh, or uh, the Project uh, Waffles page, and we'd be happy to get that. We have just a couple more short videos, and uh, we're very excited about the upcoming season. Thank you for your time.